woman who wanted to marry. Hello, good evening, Dark Secret community. My name is Raphael. I am 78 years old, and I want to share with you my most chilling experiences as an embalmer. This story took place in the state of Veracruz at a funeral home that I owned, but I also want to share some experiences from when I was training to become an embalmer. I worked there for many years until I eventually sold it. In such a place, you get used to experiencing many things, hearing, feeling, and seeing them. And today, I want to tell you what used to happen there. It wasn't just the workers who experienced this. Even people who came to watch over their deceased relatives asked us about this inexplicable event. Let me tell you what happened back then. One day, the body of a young woman, who had died in an accident, arrived at the funeral home. That's what the girl's relatives had told us. The whole situation was very sad and unfortunate, but despite that, we had to do our job as respectfully as possible, and that's what we did. Later that day, the young woman's family arrived and asked us for something very special, something that we found very heartbreaking but was respectful since it was their request. Sometimes, the relatives of the deceased ask for some retouching, like covering up scars or applying makeup or a hairstyle. But what the mother of this deceased young woman asked us to do was to put on her wedding dress after we finished embalming her, as they wanted to hold her wake in that attire. That was the woman's dream, to get married in that dress, but she couldn't fulfill that wish, since her fiancé had already proposed and they had almost everything ready for the wedding. They wanted her to be buried in her dress. We received the dress and kept it in a safe place until the embalming process was complete, after which we would put on her cherished garment. That's what we did. We did her makeup beautifully, put on the dress and placed a bouquet in her hands. The young woman looked as if she were sleeping. She was very beautiful. Her family saw her and were satisfied with the work we had done. At this point, our job was done. The following morning, they would take her body for burial. We continued working as usual, thinking that this would be the end of it. We were left with a lot of sadness, as the fact that she went in her wedding dress had really impacted us. We regretted that she couldn't live the life that was just beginning for her. A few days later, one of my workers told me he had heard footsteps in the section where we stored the coffins, and it sounded like the boxes were being moved. Some of them were on the stands that we use for the wakes, as this allows the relatives of the deceased to choose a coffin by looking at it both inside and out, whether it's made of wood or metal. Anyway, it's an area where we display the coffins, and it sounded, the worker said, as if they were being moved from one side to the other. At first he thought that one of the other workers was in there with some clients or maybe cleaning, but when he approached, he didn't see anyone. That's how things started. On another occasion, when he heard footsteps, he said they sounded like a woman's heels walking slowly from one side to the other. I even told him that maybe it was the secretary, to which he replied that it couldn't have been because it was early in the morning, and by that time, she was no longer at the funeral home. Trying to find the most logical solutions, I then told him it could have been one of the ladies who accompany the mourners in the viewing rooms. But this couldn't be either, because my worker heard the footsteps in the coffin section, and that area wasn't open in the early hours unless a client arrived, and then it would be opened. This left many of us puzzled, but we let the situation pass. The third time, it was a lady who told us she saw a white shadow, or something similar. She had gone to a wake and stepped out to breathe in the small garden outside the viewing room. While lighting a cigarette, she saw out of the corner of her eye something like a white sheet or a white dress passing by. She looked towards where the figure had passed and noticed it wasn't moving very fast, but when she raised her head, it was no longer there, nor could she see it anywhere else. Additionally, she said she felt a cold breeze when it passed by her, even though that night was warm, as it was the month of May. Things were starting to get strange, but in a funeral home, anything can happen. It's worth mentioning that these events occurred the same week we had the body of the young bride, and more inexplicable things would continue to happen. Another incident occurred when one of the workers stayed late into the night to work with some other employees, preparing bodies for the next morning. He told me what he saw when I arrived in the morning, and that's when we started to realize what was happening. It turns out that on that day, while they were working, he went out to get some disinfectant materials. He had to cross from the embalming room to the materials and instruments room, which connects to a long hallway leading to the area where the storage drawers are, where bodies are placed before embalming. My worker said that as he passed from one room to the other, he felt a cold that chilled him to the bone, which made him look in the direction where the air was coming from, and that's when he saw her. It was a bride, slowly crossing with her head down, looking sad. I paused for a moment and asked him if he remembered what the girl looked like. 
and he told me that she had straight dark hair, was slender, and held a bouquet of white roses in her hands. He also said he didn't feel fear but rather sadness, which was what came through in that image. I then remembered the young bride, and that's exactly how we felt that day when we prepared her in her coffin. Great sadness. I had no doubt it was her, and it must have been the same thing that the woman who went out to smoke that early morning saw when she thought she saw something similar. On another occasion, a couple who had left one of the viewing rooms approached us and told us that when they went out to the small cafe we had in the funeral home, they ordered some coffees. While they were talking, they were looking out towards the garden that was outside the cafe. I should mention that the funeral home had several gardens that almost surrounded the viewing rooms in the cafe, and each one had a small metal bench where people could go out to clear their minds from the tough experience of being in the viewing rooms. They would always step outside to get some fresh air. The cafe had large glass windows that acted as doors, allowing people to see the outside. The couple who told us this sat there, and right in front of them, a bride passed, gliding through the garden of the viewing room and crossing over to the garden of the cafe. They were quite frightened and nervous as they told us how they saw her, and the description matched exactly what my worker had seen, the same bride with her bouquet of white roses. Of course, they were very impressed, as it's not something that happens every day. And although we were used to such things, it's always difficult for people who are taken by surprise by these apparitions from beyond. This happened two more times, but there's something we hadn't noticed until we pieced together all the events that occurred with the bride's apparition. Each time she appeared or was seen by someone, we would find a white rose or some petals in the place where she passed. For example, the day the couple saw her in the cafe, they went out and saw a white rose on the bench outside in the garden. The day my worker saw her in the hallway, he found some scattered petals of the same color, and so it went on each occasion. It was truly incredible. So, after so many events that lasted three weeks, I decided to hold a small blessing dedicated to the young bride. It had been a long time, and the girl couldn't find eternal rest after all she had done. We never saw her again, nor did we feel her immense sadness. This is just one of the many experiences we had at what was once my funeral home, but the paranormal has followed me since the beginning of my training. I clearly remember the day I started working as a general assistant at a large funeral home. The building seemed quiet and peaceful from the outside, but I soon realized there was something sinister inside. From the first day, a series of inexplicable situations occurred that left me horrified, and believe me, I never thought something like this would happen again years later in my own business. My first terrifying experience in that place happened at night. I was alone in the basement, doing some cleaning tasks, when I suddenly heard footsteps echoing in the empty hallways. The sound was approaching quickly, but there was no one there. I felt a chill run down my spine and decided to run out of the basement without looking back. As the days went by, the strange phenomena intensified. It was a building through which thousands of people had passed. Coffins seemed to move on their own during the night, changing positions without any logical explanation. Sometimes I found doors that had been locked wide open, as if someone or something had forced them. I even heard murmurs and whispers coming from empty rooms. But the most terrifying experience happened one night while I was working in the preparation room. That early morning I was alone, preparing the body of an elderly woman for her funeral the next day. Suddenly, I felt a gaze fixed on me, as if someone was watching me from some dark corner of the room. The atmosphere became oppressive, and my breathing grew labored. In an instant, I saw a pale, ghostly figure move quickly out of the corner of my eye. I turned to face it, but it vanished into thin air. My heart was racing as I looked around, trying to find some logical explanation for what I had just witnessed. But there was nothing, only the cold and silent preparation room. From that moment on, I became increasingly paranoid. The feeling of being watched became a constant, even outside the funeral home. My nights were filled with nightmares, and my mental health began to deteriorate. My co-workers noticed the change in me, but when I tried to tell them what was happening, they looked at me with disbelief and told me it was just my imagination. Desperate for answers, I did everything I could to find out why so many things were happening. I searched through the funeral home's files and records and discovered a series of dark and tragic incidents that had occurred in the past. It seemed that not-so-good people would come to this building, and apparently they were in cahoots with some sort of sect. There were rumors that the restless spirits of the deceased still roamed the place. Finally, I couldn't bear the fear any longer, and I quit my job at the funeral home, but the supernatural experiences I had there haunted me even after I left. To this day, I still have nightmares and feel the cold, penetrating gaze of something unknown watching me from the shadows. 
and although what happened with the bride was not easy, it doesn't compare to what I lived through in that place. The devil takes the bodies. Allow me to also tell you something that doesn't only involve the entities that remain in this plane. It's another chilling experience I lived many years ago in that same old funeral home. And what ultimately caused me to never return to that place. Something that has to do with the devil himself. As an old man, my memories may sometimes be vague, but this story has remained etched in my mind as if it happened just yesterday. It was the year 1965 when I worked as an apprentice in a funeral home located in that small town. That old and gloomy building stood on a forgotten corner, surrounded by twisted trees and wrapped in a somber atmosphere. From my first day there, I knew there was something unsettling and supernatural about that place. My mentor, Mr. Rubin, a man with a dark and deep gaze, had been running the funeral home for years. He was known for his experience in handling the most unusual and difficult situations that arose when dealing with the dead. But what he never told me was that this funeral home harbored a dark and disturbing secret. One night, while I was alone preparing a body for the wake, a strange feeling of a supernatural presence took hold of the room. I felt a chill run down my spine as I heard whispers and diabolical laughter that seemed to resonate in the dark corners. I tried to stay calm, thinking my mind was playing tricks on me. But the atmosphere became increasingly oppressive, as if something evil was lurking. Suddenly the lights flickered and went out, leaving me in complete darkness. Now when I watch horror movies, I realize how similar the scenes are to what happened that night. My heart pounded with fear as a sinister voice echoed in the deathly silence of the night, whispering my name in a piercing tone. After what felt like an eternity, the lights flickered back on, and I found myself facing a dark and demonic figure. It was a twisted creature with blood-red eyes and sharp claws. I was paralyzed as its presence exuded an aura of indescribable malice and evil. Immobilized by fear, I could barely utter a word. That demonic being approached slowly, laughing with a malevolent tone. You've come to settle a debt, it whispered in my ear. But I didn't understand anything, and I felt its icy breath on the back of my neck. My mind clouded with confusion and terror, unable to comprehend what debt it was referring to. The soul of the deceased was promised long ago, and now it's time to collect, it continued. Desperate to escape that infernal torment, I struggled to find words that would free me from this nightmare. Then, I remembered an old local legend that said the devil had the power to take a body if the soul belonged to him. In desperation, I uttered those protective words, imploring the heavens in a final attempt to save myself. I'm certain it was Lucifer himself collecting his debts. That twisted figure paused for a moment, as if my prayer had disrupted its plans. In that brief respite, I managed to flee the preparation room and ran down the dark hallway of the funeral home desperately searching for an exit. The laughter and whispers pursued me as my heart pounded with supernatural force. Finally, I reached the front door and pushed it open. I ran out into the street, leaving the funeral home and its dark secret behind. I never found out what happened to that body the devil took, or what debt it intended to collect. But since that day, I've always believed there are forces beyond our understanding that lurk in the most unexpected places. So end the three most impactful stories I've lived as an embalmer undoubtedly experiences that have haunted me for decades. And though many will doubt their veracity, I assure you that what I experienced that night in the old funeral home was undeniable proof that evil can manifest in the most terrifying and incomprehensible ways. Over the years, the funeral home became a place that tormented my mind and left an indelible mark on my soul. Now, I always try to avoid any mention of these topics or that sinister place and the terrible experiences I lived within its walls. I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for listening to me. Dear friends, thank you so much for joining me in this broadcast. You would help me a lot by subscribing, activating the notification bell, and leaving me your thumbs up along with your comment. I always read them and try to reply. And if you still have the courage to listen to another of our horror stories, I'll leave one on screen to keep you company for the rest of the night. See you in the next episode of Dark Secret.